Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. It's JJ once again. I've got another unboxing for you on another 900 series motherboard. So today we're going to be doing an unboxing, a little bit of a feature overview on our brand new Sabertooth 990FX motherboard. This is going to be a brand new addition in terms of the AMD lineup. It's going to be the first time that we've released an actual Tough series motherboard for AMD. So for those of you who are not familiar with what Tough is all about, the Ultimate Force has really been a series uh, that was designed about having a, a core fundamental appreciation for durability, long-term reliability, and cooling performance. So previously we had a lot of users that were really interested in terms of a lot of the performance and functionality that you had with ROG as well as our higher end mainstream series product, but they were looking for something that was a little bit more kind of slimmed down in terms of the, the functions and features on the board, but didn't compromise in terms of the quality or the overall performance. So this is where Sabertooth came into play. So you're definitely going to see that in terms of what we're going to be going over. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what comes inside the box. So 990FX replaces the previous 890FX lineup of motherboards. And the big differential is going to be two things. You're going to get uh, one, it's going to be the support for upcoming Bulldozer and Zambezi based CPUs. And then secondary from that, you're also going to go ahead and get SLI support. As you can actually see in our system that we have running here, we actually have our 990FX Tough board, and we actually have two GTX 560 direct CUs running in SLI on the motherboard. So this is a great new addition in terms of uh, gamers being able to now have access to NVIDIA multi-GPU technology, but on the AMD platform. So let's go ahead and take a look and see uh, some of these accessories that come included inside the box. So first we've got the, the IO shield. As always, we've got our padded IO shield, which reduces EMI as well as makes the installation process a little bit easier, a little bit softer on the hands. Make sure that you don't get any cuts or nicks. Two, we've got a little inside case sticker. You can go ahead and put it inside or outside your case. Now it's ultimate force, tough inside. You've got, of course, the installation guide and motherboard manual itself. And then we have the support DVD, which contains the drivers and our AI Suite 2 software, as well as our thermal radar software, which we'll be going into when we take a look at the board. We have notice of our five-year warranty. It's the only motherboard on the market that features a five-year warranty. And then we have something pretty cool, which is a certificate of reliability. Tough made its uh, real big standout when it launched initially because all the individual components in terms of the chokes, the MOSFETs, the capacitors on the motherboard have to pass an independent military spec validation test. So not only do we have a much higher stress and validation process internally here at ASUS, in terms of giving you a, a more reliable and a more durable platform to work on, but we've also taken it upon ourselves to say, you know what, we want somebody else to take a look at these components and say, you know what, they meet a higher level of specification. So you as a user, you can go ahead and take a look at this and you can actually even go to support.asus.com and download an actual guide, which will actually show you a lot of the tests uh, with pictures and detailed information on actually how these uh, components are actually tested and to what specifications. Got our SLI bridge for two-way SLI support. We have our Q connectors. This is an easy way to allow you to go ahead and take the leads from the front of your chassis or your case. Go ahead and connect them to here, and then from here, go ahead and connect them to the actual motherboard. It makes the installation process much easier. And then we've got two SATA 6G cables. Two sets, excuse me, of SATA 6G cables, giving you a total of four. These are the actual true SATA 6G cables, which actually have additional shielding, uh, which are designed to go ahead and help you ensure the best performance, especially for high-speed SATA 6G SSDs. Let's go ahead and take a look at the board itself. So one of the most apparent things that you're going to see on this board is definitely the aesthetic. Saber tooth has a classic, aggressive, military styling. It's kind of, kind of got a camouflage look going with this uh, black, green, and brown look. It's a really nice looking board. It looks really different from pretty much anything else that's out there. So first and foremost, you're gonna see this really aggressive, high dissipative heat sink with a sintered heat pipe that actually runs underneath the VRM assembly. This actually black coating right here is actually what we refer to as the Ceramix. 
This is a special high-tech, um, high, high dissipative coating that we actually put on top of the heat sink assembly itself, which creates micro points of diffusion on the heat sink, which allows heat to effectively dissipate more effectively from the actual heat sink itself. So with our VRM components that are underneath here, such as our drivers, our MOSFETs, which produce a lot of heat, especially as we start to overclock a platform, that's going to go ahead and move up through the heat sink and then dissipate through the ceramics. And we additionally place it here because when you go ahead and place multiple GPUs here on the board and they start to work under load, you can get a lot of ambient heat increase in that area. And so we don't want the heat to affect our south bridge, uh, which when affecting the south bridge, if the temperatures can get too hot, you can potentially get data integrity issues where the information that's being sent to your hard drives from your serial ATA ports could be compromised or maybe cause some issues. So that's the main reason why we place it here and then on the VRM as well. So before we go into anything else that's on the board, let's go ahead and just take a look at the back I.O. Back I.O., we've got two USB 2 ports, PS2 port for legacy connections. This is a combo connector to allow you to go ahead and use a keyboard or a mouse. You've got the Toslink optical connection. You've got power eSATA, 1394 Firewire, two more USB 2 ports. We have two USB 3 ports. Now this is actually powered by our brand new AS Media USB 3 controller, so this gives us actually faster USB 3 performance in both read and write than the previous NEC-based controller. We have the eSATA, non-powered, two additional USB 2 ports, two more USB 2 ports, and then another two USB 2 ports. And then lastly here we have the Gigabit Ethernet, and rounding it all out, of course we have our HD audio connections. Let's go ahead and move back to the board and now take a look at our serial ATA connectivity. We've got our six SATA 6 ports. This is of course supporting RAID. And then in addition to that, we give you two additional serial ATA ports, which are powered by a JMicron controller. These are ideal for running uh, a legacy type of serial ATA hard drive for storage purposes, or of course you can also utilize it for an ODD. Going back over to the board in terms of the connectivity, we're going to take a look at the PCIe slots. So we've got a BI-16 slot here, PCIe. We have a BI-1 by slot, PCIe. Another BI-16 slot, PCIe. Another BI-16 PCIe, PCI. And then lastly, another PCIe BI-16. Now, one thing that you'll notice on the board is that we've done dual slot spacing. So ideally, when you're running SLI or Crossfire, you can go ahead and place your dual slot card here and then your other dual slot card here. So the advantage of that is you're going to be able to have spacing in the center so that you can have optimal airflow, so that you essentially give the cards breathing room so that you don't have to have the two cards working up against each other when a board does not have dual slot spacing. So that's going to effectively give us overall better temperature performance. Now one really cool thing that you're going to be able to do when it comes to this motherboard and temperatures is monitor them. You can't see them, but spread out throughout this motherboard there's actually 10 hardware sensors. And this comes up with a special software application that we have that's called AI Suite 2. AI Suite 2 will actually allow you to see these 10 hardware sensors and the real-time temperature information that they're providing to you. So all of a sudden you're going to be able to bring up an application and know the temperature for this VRM area or above the SATA 6G controller or by the by 16 uh, VGA graphics card. So it's going to really give you a whole level of information in terms of customizing configuring your case and the airflow allow you to take the best advantage of where you want to position things and how you effectively want to cool your system. For users that don't even want to think about it too, you can go ahead and have AI Suite 2 make adjustments to all the fan connections that you have enabled on your system and automatically account for that information that's being reported and adjust dynamically so you can go ahead and cool a little bit more when needed and when the system's idle or maybe not putting out as much heat, go ahead and relax all your fan speeds. Tying into that AI Suite 2 and the monitoring abilities got a lot of fan connectivity on the board. So let's take a look at our fan connections. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. With the exception of one, they're all four pin fan headers, so that's support for PWM. And we've got some really nice placement. Here we have side-by-side -side CPU and CPU optional. So this is great for users that are running push and pull fan configurations that are high performance heat sinks. And then we also have here connections for the back chassis fans that normally come in systems as well. One of the really cool standout features as well that we have on all of our boards 
uh, and especially stands out on Sabertooth, is the ability to have full manual fan control for both the CPU and for the chassis fan. So that gives you a lot of customization of being able to control the rotation and ultimately make sure that your system is quiet when you need to um, and can ramp up to higher performance if you want it. Taking a look at the last couple of key connectors that we're going to see on the board is that we have our front USB 3, which is really well positioned. A lot of the newer chassis that are on the market have a front USB 3 port right about here at the top of the case. So it's really well positioned that that cable just drops down straight here, makes an easy connection. Some of the competitors, you're going to see like the USB 3 port be all the way down here on the bottom. It's really weird because when you have your graphics card here and here, sometimes it might mean that you're going to have to run the cable kind of over the board and that really wouldn't work out that well or kind of throws off the cable management that you would want in your system. So you've got a really easy and clean layout that you have here. In addition to that, you've got your normal, of course, standard connections, CPU power connection, 24 pin, DDR3 support. Uh, we've got our classic Memo K button. Memo K is a really cool technology so that if, let's say, maybe you start off your system with uh, four gigabytes worth of memory, two DIMMs, but six months down the road, year down the road, you decide to buy more memory, but maybe the memory you bought is no longer available and it's going to be from a different vendor or a different density, a different speed, there can always be that possibility that maybe things don't work the way that they're supposed to.